Welcome to video 8 of the Lazarus tutorial series. We are learning how to make Game Maker Studio 2. So far we're working towards creating a game which is a change in response to objects around them and we've learnt the following steps or the following skills um, so far in our video series. So far in this series we've created the Lazarus um, um, object and all the specifications around him. We've also created our four box objects. We've created a pit of boxes, background image and eventually we have it now playing without error. Okay, in this one we're going to introduce the power button in which we actually stop boxes and finish the level. We're going to increase, we're going to have another level which will increase the difficulty and also increase the box speed. And we're also going to test it again to make sure that we are managing to continue this without any errors. Okay, so time to make some new levels. Now, the little um, mechanism we have to move to the next level is a little stop button that we need to create. So first off, I need to create the sprite for that. Um, I'm going to edit image and then going to import image. Here's a little stop button up here. And yeah, bring him in. Don't need to, thankfully there's no green there. Don't need to animate it, so I'm just gonna write S and PR underscore um, button. Okay, so that's all I need to do for him. Radio. So I need to close him up. And then I need to open the objects. I need to create an object called SPR, no, SPR, OBJ button. Um, so the object button, and I just need to add the sprite here and I think I need to make it solid because we're going to test where the Lazarus is beside the object so I think we'll make it solid just to play it safe right here and the button actually hasn't got any events it just it sits around like the wall rightio so now what we need to do is we need to do our work in our object Lazarus stand okay and in here we need to um, add something to the, not the step, but the end step. So as opposed to checking it all the time, we just want to check this at the end of each step. So once we've checked whether it should be afraid, etc. So step, end step, and what we're going to do is we're going to see whether there is an object, the object button, um, beside Lazarus. Now the buttons can be on either side of the screen, so we'll bring the, the room back up. Um, Here's the rooms. Bring the room back up. Look, the button will be up here and up here. So, which kind of makes a point that we need to, while we're here, objects, we need to put a second layer of wall around. Otherwise, Lazarus has got nothing to stand upon. So, um, in here, or just, what was it? Control, Alt, Alt, there's, I think it's Alt. There we go. Alt click. Radio. Right so ultimately, the objects are going to stand up here. So, object button will live up here and up here. So we need to check when Lazarus is standing here. If he's standing here, he's beside it. So if the buttons here, um, if the buttons to the right, so if it's X forty or to the left, which is X negative forty. Now, I'm going to cheat because I'm no good at this game and move him down here to make it easier to work out. But you understand what we're looking for, that he's either to the left or right of the button. So come back over into our workspace, tidy it back up, and we're going to, at the end of the end step, we are going to see if an object is at. If any object, oh, is it not any object, we want is object at. So look for collisions collisions if object at if collision shape no if object is at now the object I'm looking for in particular is if the object is button radio and if the object button is at 40 relative relative don't forget the second one like I did last time and give yourself a massive headache so if the object buttons directly to the right then we do want it to do something what we want it to do is um, we will get it to um, create a um, 
we want it to create an instance of um, the object is our message object. So object message. Oh yeah, where is OBJ message? There you go. And we'll just leave that go. Now the other thing we need to consider. So if it's not, if it's if, if there's not a button to the right, we need to also check whether there's a button to the left. So come back up in here. Check object if there's a button to the negative 40 and zero relative relative. Right now, if there's a button to the left, we also want to create an instance of. Um, just going to copy that and paste it not there, but here. So we also want to create a, a instance of object message. Okay, so that's the one that we use for the, I know you've been squished, you, you died, try again. So what I'm going to do is now close that down and open up OBJ message. And we're gonna make some adjust, adjustments in here. So at the moment, our draw is, it just says, oh no, you've been squished, you died. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to check and see whether the person is squished or whether the person has moved to the next level. Rightio, so what we actually need to test is if there is still an instance of OBJ Lazarus Stan. So this is before we draw. I'm going to go and check an instance here. Yeah, no, check in. Um, check instance. So let's go down instances and uh, if instance exists, so if instance exists of, um, and then we'll have is OBJ Lazarus stand. So if an instance still exists of this and the message has been called, then we know that he's reached a button as opposed to being squished. So in which case we need to put a different message up. So I'm going to um, copy all of this and go right mouse click copy and paste where the oh, you paste it down there that was painful so I'm after set text example text alignment one two three five six and that now needs to come up here can you scroll more? Oh, look, I can scroll while I'm clicking. Awesome. Um, for your information, while I was holding the left mouse button down, I also did the scroll wheel. Okay, so now um, I want to keep the alignment the same as I'm going to change. The color, I want it to be red. I want it to be green and happy and joyous. So let's make it green. Um, okay, so that's the color there. Um, alpha true, the font's still going to be big. Um, and... It's not going to say, oh no, it's going to say level completed. Right here, and then font small, still press any key to, press any key to continue this time. So I come across here. Okay. Any key to continue. So it does that. So that's that's the that's the one we need to check there. But then we also need to, when you press any key, it needs to react differently according to whether there is a standing Lazarus or not, whether the Lazarus died or whether the Lazarus has um, pressed the button. So if instance exists of Lazarus standing, so if there's not an instance of him, he restart the room. If there is an instance, we need to go to the next room. So scroll down here till we find rooms. There's rooms. How do rooms come on? Um, here we are. Move to next room. Okay. Go to next room. Radio. So now just to make that worthwhile, we'll make it actually work. We need to close that down and we need to create some more rooms. So I'm just going to um, duplicate that room and I'm going to duplicate the room again and 
duplicate it in here. Now, you can change the, um, you know, rename this. You can change the room so it's skinnier or it's um, deeper or however you want. You can decide to make it more difficult by playing around with those elements. For testing purposes, I'm just going to uh, make them all the same, just move the buttons around so I know whether or not he moves from room to room. So basically in room one, I'm just going to go to, oh, what, room, what level did I put the button? Yeah, put them on the wall button, that's one. The wall layer, so I'm just gonna move him here and him here. No, that should be in room zero, sorry. Room zero, here and here. Room one, room one, here, here and here. Hmm, why are they? Okay, I'm gonna delete you out. Okay, so room zero, I'm gonna put you in here and you in here. Uh, because I'm in the same room. Yeah, that's not embarrassing at all. So, let's go back to room zero up here because I haven't opened all the relative rooms. Let's move him in there. And room here. Make him... Well, make him just one further out. And room two. Wall layer. Make him four away. And then room three, wall layer, and then make him five away. One, two, three, four, five away. Radio, so let's give this a go here. Let's go and press play and see if this works. So I should be able to move across here and doesn't recognize it. Okay, so back from troubleshooting, if I press play, the problem we have is that when this comes down, we move to the button, it's not reacting to the object button there. So what I've done is I've gone and had a look for the troubleshoot. I said, well, where does that happen? Where should I be triggering the button? Well, that was in my object Lazarus stand and it was at the end step. And I've come in here and I've said, if object are realized, I said if object is at object message when what I should be looking for is object is at object button. So it's looking for the wrong top of object there. So object button, then create an instance of object button. So let's see if that works now. Press play and let's see what runs. I come across object button and yes, it reacts, but oh, there's another error. And what's the other? So let's look at these code errors and see if we can understand. So fatal error, action number one in step event two for object. So object last stand is where it is. So it's actually an object last stand. And the problem is the create um, instant create layer specified layer instances does not exist. And of course it doesn't exist because that's just the standard one. And if we look at our rooms, our room or rooms are up here. We have three layers, Lazarus, box and wall. So we want it to be on the top layer, the message, so it should be on Lazarus. So let's go back, look at object stand, and it says instances, yeah. Well, that makes sense that that doesn't work. So let's go Lazarus. All right, let's try that again, press play. Yeah, it's got a message, but it's playing both messages here. Why is it playing both messages? Why well, didn't want that? And it didn't go to the next level. So, because I need to press the button. So, let's go have a look at both messages. So, let's look at object here. Object um, message, OBJ message. And here, OBJ message there. And we can see that it goes, okay, so if instance exists, goes to the, um, no, here, it's in the draw. So if, if his stand exists, 
go run this but then it it hasn't got it will it will run that code and then also run this as well because this is just after the the if statement so we actually want to put an, an else in here do we have else let's have a look ah here's an else there so i'm going to bring else into here and place them there and then move all of this all of this under the else so now it's going to say right if this instance is object lazarus exists run the yay you've made it to the next level if not then run the you you've died try again then we have to do that as well over here we can see the else in here as well too so i'm going to come in and put the else there and drag him to the side of that okay so hopefully that's the end of our troubleshooting let's have a look here yay message press space yay message press space yay message so all very joyous it's giving us what we want okay cool so that's now going to the next level remember we need got to make things more difficult when we move to the next level though so to do that what we need to do is that we need to increase the speed of the actual boxes now you can make each level more difficult by making it narrower and deeper so you have to get boxes higher so i'll leave you do that with your work but what i'm going to do is look about how we actually create the speed so increase the speed so what we do we need to go to our object control and we're actually going to create a global variable called box speed and a global variable is different because it means that all the um, all the different instances can refer back to the global variable and get the very and get access to it, um, and it doesn't belong to one particular um, object. So up here in the create, when we create, we want to create a global um, set global variable. So I'm going to set global variable, and I'm going to call this variable box speed all right and i'm going to set the value to five because that's our standard forming value anyway right so now we now need to look at all of our falling objects and change it so instead of saying speed we instead refer to the global box speed so let's see falling stone so when it's created it falls at a speed and instead of that we're going to type um global dot maybe just write box speed box yeah yeah box speed global variable done so and that's here he's been done so that's my falling stone object falling metal when he creates he goes at box speed radio that's at closed wood he's at oh create at box speed wood card create box speed right yeah so now they're off one of box speed and let's just just do a quick run to make sure that i haven't made an error there because i've been making a few yep no it's still falling that's what we want right yeah so the last thing we need to do is we actually need to increase the box speed whenever we move into the next room so we do that remember from the object message we said go to next room so before we go to next room we need to set the global variable and that global variable is called box speed and we need to increase it by one relative so each room will be fast so let's make it obvious i'm going to increase it by 10 so you'll see that it actually does work for testing purposes so let's limit the speed go into here next oh oh i didn't have to i just need to change the variable um let's just see don't have to put the global dot in front of it it's just say box speed right let's give that a try
And yes, he is significantly faster. No, it's not. It's just gone to 10. Because it's got to be relative. Yeah, that's okay. That's cool. So, so increase by 100. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's him. He increases that relative. So, okay, so that's just um, the last thing we need. Um, that's the last thing we need to do. So we've finished this little video now. There we go. Oh, well, there we go. We finally have a um, series of levels now for the Lazarus game, and he proceeds to each level by getting all the way up and pressing the power button. And in this video, you've learnt about the instance exists and the set global variable actions.